Welcome to episode 12 of the Ready For More podcast. The sort of joy-led life is all part of that because I think everybody has their own freaky, in, you know, ingredients for the life that they want to lead. Welcome to the Ready For More podcast, where we share success strategies and stories for women business owners, entrepreneurs who are ready for more for yourself and for your business. I'm your host, Heather Cameron, and I'm here to help you to discover your unique path to profitability and success so you can achieve your more on your own terms. Are you ready for more? You can find today's show notes and links at www.igniteyourmarket.com slash ready for more. Hello and welcome to the Ready for More co- podcast. Today, my guest is Marina per- Pearson, is a mom, bestseller, author, investor, podcast host and lifestyle coach for busy moms and women in business who want to stress less and live more. Over the past decade, she has been running retreats, workshops, and online programs in one form or another to support women to experience a joy-led life. This way, they can ditch living lives of obligation versus living their own life on their own terms. Her work has been featured in Marie Claire, ITV This Morning, Huffington Post, The Daily Mail, to name a few. So welcome, Marina. So excited to have you as a guest. Thank you so much. It's such a pleasure to be here. Um, that's your bio, but can you give us a bit of background about your business and what you're doing and your expertise? Yeah. Um, so, you know, back in the day, I would have just said, oh, that's what I do. I coach women um, to help them feel, have a more freedom-led life, joy-led life, one that means that they're doing it on their own terms. Um, but actually... I've got my fingers in quite a few pies at the moment and um and I know that this podcast is about you know dropping the shoulds and uh looking at what really lights you up and the kind of life you want so I um at the beginning of this year I embarked on a bit of a different journey to the one that I'd been on for quite a while so I had been working with I'd been running workshops and I'd been um, doing online courses with women to help them stress less and live more, which basically is um, to spend more time in that state of mind of presence, you know, this, um, and connected to to themselves, as in that larger source of of information, knowledge, whatever you want to call it, universal intelligence that we have at the capacity and that we are connected to. And um, I realized that I was just following some sort of a model, coaching model, a program model, some sort of that I'd seen other people do. And I've been sort of entrenched in that for the last 14 years. And I kind of realized that I didn't want to do that anymore. Um, And instead, I just wanted to see what would emerge. So, I decided to uh, host a podcast called The Joy of Being, which I I launched in April of this year in 2018. And I wanted to see where that would take me. And interestingly enough, uh, I started to connect with lots and lots of people, as you know, this happens, and realized that I actually loved doing inviting women here to my home in Spain and doing intimate retreats, doing retreats for groups um, to help them once again, stress less and live more. And at the same time, uh, start an Amazon business, which was very Hmm. strange for me. Never expected to do that. And um, it just kind of landed, you know, just kind of came my way and I just heard a big fat yes. And so usually when I hear that, when, when there's something in what comes my way and it resonates or there's a sense of like, yeah, this is, this is where I want to go or this is where I want to take it, I decided I was going to explore that. So uh, it's another income stream and it's another asset that I wanted to build and I have different income streams and assets that I now have. So interestingly enough, the sort of joy led life is all part of that because I think everybody has their own freaky in, you know, ingredients 
for the life that they want to lead. Some people want to travel the world. Others want to focus on this one thing, you know, in the coaching and building their, their business. Other people don't. And, um, and I realized that I didn't. I realized that I, I wanted the coaching to stay as it had been at the beginning when I started, which was very much let wisdom, let this universal intelligence guide that instead of me pushing and hustling and and that being where I was coming from. And so interestingly enough, I recently had an immersion, a lady that came over to Spain and we spent four beautiful days together because, well, first of all, she'd been a client. And then secondly, you know, um, she was in a position where she was shitting herself all over the place. You know, she wasn't looking after herself. She wasn't making time and space for herself, basically. Um, and things with her husband at the time weren't, weren't so great. So she came and um, had some beautiful breakthroughs, saw some wonderful things and realized that she already had an incredible life as it was. She just never saw it. Wow. Yeah. And so I realized, and, and, and interesting, and, and also funny is, is that she has, you know, a cool Facebook group full of mums who absolutely loved the fact that she'd come here and they were all like, wow, we would love to do this. So I realized that by letting it be, by letting what I want to do be and giving it space, that suddenly something like that sort of started to emerge. And we ta actually talked about um, bringing some of those women in her group to Spain. So I re to me, that's where I'm at at the moment. I'm, I'm kind of in this um, working on projects that I absolutely love and not it not letting it be one thing or look like it other you know not letting it look like what i thought it should look like right so i never imagined to start running an amazon business but i'm actually really excited by it and already contacting the brand owners and so forth and i really like this space of of letting the coaching practice or whatever you want to call it kind of emerge and unfold on its own so yes nurture it yes give it a little bit of water but let give it space and that's kind of where i am at the moment so i'm financially free um i don't actually have to work if i don't want to but i love working on projects and things that light me up no that's uh, great there was a lot of well a lot of depth in what you just said and um you know, what did one, I just say? <laughs> <laughs> one of the things you said, and, and I think it was, it, it falls a lot to the audience and to what I see a lot with women is you said, I don't want to follow somebody else's prescribed steps. I don't mm. want to be doing what someone else is. I think you said, you know, the coaching 15 step formula or whatever that you, you know, you, you came to realize that that this wasn't necessarily the right path for you. Yeah, no. And, and it was a kind of, it was a bit like, you know, when you have a passion project. So like you want to sing because you just want to sing or you want to go for a walk because you just want to go for a walk. But there's no, no like, oh, now I have to make money from this. That's what was going on for me at the time, which is I love doing this coaching thing and I love facilitating groups and I'm really good at it. And I'm not just saying that because, you know, I'm an arrogant, arrogant woman, but more, <laughs> more like, no, that's actually a skill that I have that, you know, I've, I've crafted and, and mastered over the years because I've run many workshops and so forth. And I used to be so gung ho about this business has to work. And I'd always introduce myself as a coach and what do you do? And well, you know, I'm a coach. And, and to be honest, I now see that as a far more expansive thing and, and, and not like pigeonhole it into this business. It's like this business that I'm growing. It just feels like so much more space is being given to that. And I'm always holding that vision in my mind 
Um, but I don't have the attachment to it anymore. Like it's not, if I don't do it, it's fine. If I do do it, it's great. But there's no, this has to work because if it doesn't, something awful will happen. Hmm. So um, less, less attached yeah. to the outcome than the actual. Yeah. <laughs> and just generally going, oh, okay, that's interesting. That, that, that showed up or, okay, um, that conversation with that person has led to something else. Mm-hmm. That's what I heard. The second part of yours was that I heard is that, and I think this is so important, we can put all our effort into something, but we don't control the outcome. So if you're overly attached to the outcome, then you can sometimes stop yourself from actually exploring and seeing what's in front of you. Yeah. And there's also something to be said for having structure um, and, and putting, you know, systems and processes in place as well so that you have the time. So, you know, running the podcast, for example, is a labor of love, as you know. (laughs) I love, absolutely love it, love it, enjoy it. It just ticks a lot of the boxes for me. It's about connection. It's about meeting interesting people. It's about supporting them and their message. It's about getting my message out there at the same time. I just, you know, it just, it just ticks a lot of boxes. And It also means that I have to be consistent, which is one of the things I was really bad at. Um, And since doing this podcast, I'm very consistent with putting, you know, content out there weekly, whereas before it was very sporadic. Um, But regardless of that, uh, I've, I've had to put systems and processes in place so that that can kind of run it on its own um, so that I can get to the things that can make money. Um, such as the Amazon business, for example, which I now have some systems and processes in place as well. So that's now giving me space and time to focus on um, getting in touch with the brand owners, for example, because when you're selling stuff on Amazon, um, you have to find the leads. And Mm -hmm. then um, when when you've got the products that you want to sell, then you have to get in touch with the the brand owners and I've got somebody finding the leads for me and that's a whole process and so forth and so on. And so this year for me has been huge in space and time where I just got really clear that the whole reason why I'm doing any of this, first of all, is, is because self-expression is super important to me. So that that's all about the podcast. Freedom is super important to me. So that's about putting assets in place that earn income for me so I don't have to be there. Because at the end of the day, um, I spent so many years supporting and working. And then I've got a son as well. And I was like, well, what kind of life do I want? You know, do I want to get home and stress about the fact that I haven't done this piece of work because he's now home and and I can't spend that time with him. That's, that, that, that seems a bit crazy. Um, so I was like, well, I started, I started with, I guess, the outcome in mind hmm. and, and, and reversed engineered it. Because a lot of the time we go into business thinking, that's what I want to do. And that's where we start. Mm-hmm. But we don't, talk, we don't think about what is the life, how do I want this to support my lifestyle? Absolutely. Yes. And so first of all, we need to just get clarity on what that lifestyle actually it looks like. So for me, and it, and it's not like written in stone. It's not like, well, I only want to work four hours a week or, (laughs) you know, I only want to, you know, work from this time until this time or no, for me, it's, it's much more fluid than that. But there is this sort of vision in my mind and the vision is to travel to um live in a beautiful place which is where i you know which is which where is live, yeah. where i live uh i love that though because... I'm with my son um after school he finishes at four and and basically we spend that time together after spend more time with the people that i really care about so you know i'm going off to madrid next week to spend a week with my family because i can mm-hmm. But I love that, that, that concept. And I think it's an important one to just to, to focus on for a sec is the concept of 
I meet many women entrepreneurs who, or women business owners or women who are just starting off and they don't, they almost don't believe they get to do that. They don't believe that they can craft their own, excuse me, that they can craft their own lifestyle, right? So they're, they're working just because they, they love what they do, but they don't think about what they do being the catalyst or the support to get to the lifestyle that they really could have. And yeah. it's hard sometimes to get them to even see that they have choices in, in what they do and they have a choice in the lifestyle they want to have. Yeah, it's so true. And, you know, for me, this is very new. So um, actually in one of the episodes that's coming up, I interviewed Bernadette Doyle. And what was interesting about that conversation was that it opened up a whole new way of me seeing something, which was systems and processes you know we talked about how Richard Branson when he starts a new business and the reason why he's got so many is is because basically he wants to make himself redundant from it hmm. and so he goes in and he goes right I want to start this business and in within four months he's like I can make myself redundant so he spends the first four months figuring out how he can make himself redundant now, I love that. I'm like, oh my God, I didn't know that. But it made so much sense to me. It was like, that's a whole new way of seeing business because you're not going into it going, yeah, I just want another job. I love what I do. But actually you go in with the mindset of actually being a business owner, which is mm -hmm. I love what I do. But if I don't figure out a way in, in how it's going to support my lifestyle, then mm, I might get a little bit stuck there because, you know, let's just say in our profession, uh, yes, you're the artist, right? So you love to coach, you love to create, but there's a whole bunch of other stuff that you have to do or you can outsource it. So marketing, for example, um, you can outsource that if you like. And then you're probably going, oh, but yeah, uh, what about the money? Well, what I found is this, is if you've got processes and systems in place, even at the beginning, right from the outset, and of course you may have to tr trial and error and so forth and so on. But if you're thinking that way already, you're going to be able to, to see what you're up to in a very different way. And you can actually start thinking about, okay, well, if I outsource this, then I can spend more time in generating the money. Because mm -hmm. then I'm not so bogged down in the little things that I'm supposed to be doing, um, that I think I'm supposed to be doing that I can actually out. And, it, and, you know, it's like, how much can I earn? How much can I pay that person? And how much of a profit am I making by the fact that if I earn 250 and I can outsource that job to someone else at 10 pounds an hour, Bob's your uncle. Yeah, this this way of seeing it was has was quite revolutionary for me this year. And you know, it's funny because I'd heard it so many times, <laughs> I'd seen it so many times, people had talked to me about it so many times, but I was stuck in this, I have to do it. Um this is what I'm up to as a coach, because I was so attached to what it had to look like as opposed to going, well, what is it I really want? Well, the concept of systems and, and doing that, I mean, that's part of the E-Myth Revisited even, which is yes. to put together, you know, look at your company and look at your business and say all the roles that you're playing and put a title on each role and create the systems behind it and then figure out how to give that job to somebody else. Yeah. And I think that's yeah. a, a lot of, a lot of women really haven't been trained to think that way. And a lot of women are actually very good at creating systems, but they don't realize it. You know, if you've been a mother of X amount of kids and you're getting them out the door and you're getting to work and you're doing all that, you've developed a system. I love that. We don't think of it that way, right? <laughs> we don't think of the yeah. systems that we do every single day. Um, and the systems that if you come from an employed job, you had systems there as well. But when we get into our own business, there's that insecurity about giving something to somebody else. And then there's that feeling of, well, I don't know what I want, so I don't know how to ask for it. I think that comes into it as well. Yeah. And it was funny because all of this sort of came at the same time. You know, it's, 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 it was last May when we were at a mastermind and I was getting really frustrated with my VA at the time. 
And I'm like, ah, oh, you know, she's supposed to be a self-starter and, um, and I hired her because she is that and this and that, but she doesn't seem to be doing it in the way that I want to. And I just was talking to somebody about it and they just said, well, do you have any processes and systems in place? And I was like, oh, right. <laughs> okay. Because if I did, it would mean that she would probably be more efficient um, if I did, it would also mean that I wouldn't necessarily need to rely on her, that if I wanted to go and look elsewhere that I could, um, in terms of, you know, um, financials, how much I pay her. It was a big breakthrough moment for me to realize that, that actually it was possible to create these systems and processes and free myself up and actually have a better functioning team as a result. So, I realized that the reason why I didn't have that team was because I was scared that they wouldn't do the job as well as me. But the only reason why they weren't going to be doing the job as well as me is because they didn't know the system or the process because I did unconsciously, mm -hmm. you know, not consciously speaking. So I sat there one afternoon and went, right. Okay. For example, the podcast, what is it that I do? Um, what is it that needs to get done? that we can create a system and a process for. And I just went for it. And it's been amazing because what I got to see is I'm actually really good at creating them. And I never thought I was. I thought that's what people did, you know, people that aren't like me, because I'm the creative. I, I don't bother with any of that. But as they say, you know, give me, is it give me boundaries so I can, to set me free? And so, yeah, um, it's all part of the same thing for me, which is how can you support your, how can the business or your project support you to lead the lifestyle that you want? And that does have, that includes, you know, um, systems and processes. It includes being efficient with your time. It also includes getting clarity on how you would love your lifestyle to look um, because it's not the same for everybody. Absolutely. But I love, I love your concept about systems and processes. And one thing I, I like to advise people to do is to outsource everything, but your own voice. So you still want to nice. be, and I know with your podcast or anything yes. like that, you're still the voice of your podcast. And if you're blogging, you're still the voice of the content, but that doesn't mean you need to be posting it and doing all the back end and production and all that stuff. No, and I don't, I don't, I get to do the juicy stuff that I love, which is sharing the message that I have. And I also have, have found, you know, have, have found a geek in me, which I didn't even know I had, um, and I love, you know, just to sit with my Excel sheet and go through my own personal finances. Like there's something really satisfying about that for me um, when it comes to, you know, having to put my taxes in. I love it. I love just sitting in the back there and doing the back end stuff and getting all geeky about it. So it's been really interesting because I had identified myself as someone who doesn't do that. I'd identified myself as or made up the mm -hmm. fact that I was definitely not one of those people, that I was this outgoing, creative, boho, um, you know, I sort of coined this phrase, which is, you know, capitalist hippie that um, is a free spirit, but has money. And, but I've also discovered that that, that um, sort of way of seeing myself was actually limiting what I can actually do because mm. there is this geek that loves to put order into chaos, which is so weird for me to say that because I used to be the chaos, um, you know, whirlwind of chaos. <laughs> You'd come into my bedroom and it would be, f I mean, you couldn't be able to get in because it was just piles of clothes everywhere. And now you come in and it's really neat and tidy and my cupboards are really neat and tidy and <laughs> My house is not necessarily so because I've got a four-year-old, but. But to me, it sounds like the, those are almost the stories we tell ourselves, right? So we tell ourselves these stories and then we try to, it almost limits ourselves. As you just gave a wonderful example of you had a, an image and a story that you were telling yourself and those, and that's how we are supposed to fit in. But when you let go of that story, 
it's allowing you to recreate a new story, a new story about yourself. A yeah. New story and, about um, where you're going to go. It was interesting because it wasn't like I consciously set out to challenge myself on, I have a story about not being good at this. So I'm going to do it. It was more like, well, actually that makes sense to me to do it. And even though I, there's a lot of resistance, I'm still going to sit here and, and do it anyway and see what happens. And as a result, you know, surprised, surprised the self, surprised me in the fact that I'm, I've, I've discovered a, a new part of my, that, that I didn't know existed or that I could get excited about. So, and also the other thing, it really played, it really plays towards my sort of facilitator teacher aspect, because if you've got a team, you know, you, you need to train them. So it's almost like, I hadn't seen that either, that somehow that I can facilitate or train people in my business. They don't have to just be clients, you know? So that was, that was something else that I got to see recently. That's good. I mean, what I love in that, and I think gets me, it really gets me excited is that we're not one thing and we can be many things as we, not only as we go through, but as we age and as we bring in our life experiences and our wisdom and everything else, it doesn't mean we have to be what we were before. We can, you know, add new things. We can embrace being geeky. (laughs) We can, you know, we can learn and not limit ourselves. And I think women, women have a tendency to limit ourselves and we don't need to. There's such a body of wealth and greatness in women that. Yeah. And I probably, you know, and it's interesting because I I get what I, what excites me is that in a year's time, I'll be maybe looking back on this conversation and going, wow, I didn't even realize that that was actually something that I would get excited about. And it's not like, you know, I go out of my way to go consciously explore it just sort of happens through insight I suppose or through a new thing that emerges and that you didn't expect or a conversation you have with someone that totally blows your mind and and the way I experience my life right now is yeah of course I go up and down a lot like anybody does you know it's the human experience I suppose but generally those are those moments are few and far between and I generally kind of have a much more expansive pleasurable life because I I'm, I'm I'm much more clear on how I want to live it and you know this also plays into having those sorts of boundaries I um it's funny I was playing around with this years ago about so I realized I was like oh I don't want to have calls in the evening and then I would set my you know, program to calls in the evening. I'm like, why am I doing that? And I realized that I had this people pleaser in me who wanted to make sure that everybody that had signed up for the course would be happy. And of course, there were people who didn't want to have calls during the day or they couldn't have them. And so instead of just sticking with, well, actually, that doesn't work for me, I went ahead and felt like I needed to appease them but I learned a really valuable lesson in that and it was funny because all of the people that had said they didn't want to have calls in the in during the day ended up um leaving the program I think there was about two of them and it was just hilarious because I was like oh okay that's interesting the very people that I was attempting to please left the program anyway And now I'm doing calls in the evening when I don't really want to do them. And it turns out that the women that were left on the program actually would have preferred to have done them during the day. So finally, so in the end, we shifted the times, but it was just such a, uh, it it was such a, a lesson for me in what works for me um, as opposed to what what I think I should be thinking how others, how it should work for other people. And granted, you know, like there needs to be some sort of common sense in that, I I guess. I was just going to say, just even the way you said that is that kind of shoulds that go on the head, right? It's what, what I think should be working for other people versus what just works for you. And I, you know, people, if people want to work with somebody or if they want to buy your product or your service and you have a compelling enough reason for them to do that, they're going to approach you and try to fit into you, right? There has to be that meeting place between the two, because if you're not 
you know, if you're on a call in the evening because you don't want to be on a call in the evening, you're not bringing 100% of yourself to that call anyways. So it's, it's a good thing to, you know, find the boundaries yeah. with common sense, as you said, but still recognize that you have to, you know, I, I can never, I don't understand or how people can continue when they're working seven days a week, putting everything they're into their business. They're just exhausting themselves and the quality they bring to other people isn't there. So it's, you know, I, I have one client who I keep trying to get them to put working hours in place and to put some boundaries because she works every day. And it's like, well, you're not quality when you do that. You're not allowing yourself to regenerate. And, you know, it ebbs and flows. So um, when I'm with my son, we definitely don't have calls in the evening. But today, for example, we, I, I am doing this um, because I will make the exception to do these podcasts, especially on the other side of the world. So he's asleep now. And so this is absolutely fine for me. And I'm cool with that. Like that isn't a problem for me. I could feel like that there were certain sort of boundary leaks for me. Um, I would say one thing and do, do the other. Mm -hmm. And now I'm like, that just wouldn't make sense to me. It really, that you know, how, I guess maybe I've, I've become more conscious of how precious life actually is. And if it's not working for me to do something, it, it won't, it won't, it will mean that I'm not here or there. So Next week, for example, I'm off to Madrid and to spend some time with my family and my son. And if I put calls in the middle of that week just to appease someone, it wouldn't work because I'd be thinking, oh, now I've got to do this. And then, no, it's more like, well, that makes no sense. If I'm going to be off, be off. If I'm going to go on holiday, be on holiday. If I'm going to, yeah. and I, I, you know, things happen. So, um, this last couple of weeks, I've been shifting my flat from being a long-term tenancy to a short-term tenancy. So it's a service department and there were things that needed to get done and we had a deadline and this and that. And, you know, I was in Rome attempting to get stuff done and um, when I really didn't want to be doing that. But sometimes you have, there are exceptions. Absolutely. Sometimes life happens. If I'm on holiday, I'm on holiday now. But it never, it didn't used to be that way. And that's great. No, and I'm reading, I'm just looking at your, sorry, I'm just looking at your bio online that you had on your website because I had it up and you have a lovely thing in pinkish red writing that says life doesn't have to be hard and stressful. It can really be full of ease and grace, yeah. both personally and professionally. And I love that because it doesn't, we make it hard when it doesn't have to be hard. And we have this feeling that we, to your point, we have this feeling that we have to be on all the time and we don't need to be on all the time. We don't need to be available 24 by seven. We don't, we can take vacations and we can take time to recharge and we don't need to be there all the time. No. And there's something to be said for being elusive, you know, lead by example. So I think more of us need to, to be able to do more of that. It's interesting. Cause I used to, when I was coaching or doing leadership development for a medical facility, the people who were the most willing, willing to turn off their devices and to stay in the moment were the people who deal in the emergencies. So the emergency doctors and the ones who know what it's like to truly be in an emergency job, they were the happiest to turn things off when they had an opportunity to do it. They were like, yeah, no problem. You can have my phone. You can, I'll stay, I'll keep focused. And it was the people who weren't in emergencies who had to keep their phones on because they had this false sense of urgency. And it was a really neat thing to observe. That's really interesting, actually. It's just habits. Mm -hmm. Habits we fall into and habits that we, yeah, just habits we fall into and we get sort of drawn in by those habits of thinking. And, and it's just a question of, of testing it or challenging it and going, well, what would happen if I didn't actually answer that email right now? Mm -hmm. I remember uh, speaking to a client about this and, you know, she was like, oh my God, you know, I've got all these clients demanding my time. And I feel like I have to answer every single email that comes in. And I said, well, do you have an email responder that says, you know, if I don't get back to you in, in 24 hours, it's not like I'm ignoring you. It's just that I'm either deciding to take some time out with my family or, um, or whatever else. And um, she was like, well, no, I'd never thought of a, a responder. And I said, well, give it a go. And, and it just that one little thing made such a big difference to her because she knew that they would get 
a message um but that she didn't actually have to respond there and then she'd already made it clear that she would respond in the 24 hours or in the 48 hours that she'd put on the message because the thing is she was really scared that they would go to somebody else and so if she didn't respond she was like oh my god if they don't if i don't respond they may go to the competition and i was like well if they really want to be your client they'll wait <laughs> and in fact there's something quite you know there are certain restaurants in London, for example, that have a waiting list or the people like waiting, they're queuing to get in. There's something to be said for, 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 for that. Mm -hmm. um, so this knee jerk reaction isn't necessarily always the best way of, of doing business. And if certainly if you don't want that sort of life, the knee jerk reaction sort of life where you're being pulled but from pillar to post, you know, either your child needs you, husband needs you uh, your clients need you and yeah the last person that gets looking is you um and then you wonder why you're so tired and and feel so burnt out um because you can't remember the last time you actually took some time out for yourself or maybe even did something nice for yourself or because you're at the mercy or at this response of of the demands that you think you're at the mercy of mm -hmm. Well, and you just, what you put there is you can set the own, to, you can, sorry, we have the choice to set our own tones for our businesses. Yeah. We can, we can set and things then. to be urgent and that sense of urgency in everything that we do, or we can set a tone that, you know, for myself personally, I try to set a tone that's much more relaxed because I don't want to teach my clients to be crazy about answering every email every five minutes or, you know, I think our, our, these smartphones aren't that smart for us. <laughs> they tend to make us think everything's urgent when it really isn't and that we have to respond immediately when we really don't have to. So try to set that tone because I think that's, that drains you when you feel like you have to be on all the time. Yeah. And I think the smartphones are amazing. Um, I think it's just incredible that we have this incredible technology at our fingertips. And there are ways in which we can take advantage of it, but not let it not let it become, you know, our, mo our modus operandi. So you can, you know, take Facebook off and, and turn your notifications off exactly. and things like that. You can still have access to it, but you don't have the distraction. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, for a lot of people is quite scary, or at least it looks very scary to them. Absolutely. But it's just playing around with it. Like what would happen if you did it? Like give yourself a day to do, you know, a couple of days to do that and see what happens. I have a Facebook live about that, which was you take control of your smartphone, don't let it control you because you're right. It's an absolutely amazing tool, but it is a tool and it, it's the, it's, it's taken over some of the just basic, you know, I hate it when I'm in a grocery store lineup and somebody's talking on the phone and ignoring the cashier and ignoring everybody else. And it's like, what could be so urgent <laughs> in this moment that you can't be present in what you're doing? Mm -hmm. So it has a problem there. We're getting closer to the end of our time. And I was wondering, what advice would you give to another woman who is in business? They're ready for more. What, what would be your thought and your advice that you would give her? I guess a little bit of what I've already said, which is feel into the type of life that you want and ask, you know, how, how would your business be able to support that, that lifestyle that you want? If you did have the lifestyle, what would you need in place for you to actually live the lifestyle you want while the very thing that you love to do is supporting you? Would it require systems and processes? Would it require a team? Would it require, you know, creating an asset as opposed to in just income generation, which is a very different way of, of viewing it. So income in an asset is something that generates the money for you and works hard for you. Whereas income generation is you chasing the money. And you know, if you're asking yourself, well, is it possible? Yes, it is. But, but knowing that, and, and, and actually noticing, probably noticing where there's resistance, where there might be um, doubt about whether it can be like that for you and just explore that. That's great advice. Where can our listeners find out more about you? And I know you've mentioned that you have your podcast. How can they find out more about you, your website? What, and I'll put whatever you say in the show notes, but how can they find out more about you? Um, I've got my website, which is www.marinapearson.com. 
I also have my Joy of Being podcast, uh, which is all about um, stressing less and living more so that you light up with insight and joy so you can unplug from your stress. And um, I also have something called the Joy Catalyst Scorecard, which is a, a sort of a bit of a tester to see where you are on the Joy Richter scale um, and to see how stressed your, you know, what, what level of stress you're in and what to do with the joy gaps and how to fill them. And actually on my website, you've got three uh, different things that you can sign up for. There's a Joy Catalyst Scorecard, there's an audio for guilt-free living and then there is another one um which is a timesheet which is a you know hack time hack checklist um to give yourself more time hmm. excellent and i will put those in the show notes so people can find them on my website at www.connectyourmarket.com um i have three parting questions uh the first one is what is your superpower if you were to think about it what's your superpower that's a really great question I guess it's my capacity to have people feel very at ease with me. Hmm. I like that one. Um, the second one is what is your favorite quote? If you can think of it, do you have a favorite quote? Yes, I do. Um, and it's, and in this game of life, we all search for ourselves. And when I say self, I'm not talking about, the usual self what i'm saying is the self that created life in the first place so if you're looking for happiness if you're looking for tranquility if you're just looking for a loving and peaceful and understanding life what you're reaching really searching for is yourself hmm. so that was quoted by sydney banks and what i heard in that was that any time you feel insecure any time you think that the feelings are coming from that circumstance or what someone has said or anything like that actually what it's asking you to do is go inside mm -hmm. so whenever i'm kind of caught up in, in in sort of those insecure moments what i'm really searching for is myself that self that's inside all of us that i don't i guess some people call it um consciousness others call it the true self others call it the divine um your higher self whatever um that's what we're, we're wanting to connect back into we've just forgotten that in that moment when we're all caught up in our own you know personal thinking i love that yeah. lovely quote and i love the interpretation of it um the last one is is what's the one most important message you'd like our listeners to take away from our conversation you know, it's funny, like it's just come to mind really unexpected. Um, have fun <laughs> and, you know, don't, don't take life too seriously. <laughs> I think that's fantastic advice. <laughs> it's so important. And there we go. <laughs> there you go. Perfect ending. So thank you so much for taking the time. And oh, so I love the medium of being able to speak to somebody across the ocean, which is lovely. Yeah, it's so cool, isn't it? It is cool. And it's, a, it's the opportunity to bring women from all walks of life and all countries together is just an amazing part of what we can do in this podcasting world. Yeah, it is. So thank you so much for having me on here today. Thank you for listening to this episode of the Ready for More podcast. You can find today's show notes and links at www.igniteyourmarket.com slash ready for more. My name is Heather Cameron. I'm your podcast host. And when I'm not hosting this podcast, I'm busy working with entrepreneurial women like you who are ready for more in their business and are looking to get focused on their own unique path to success. You can find more about myself and my programs at www.igniteyourmarket.com. If you like what you heard, feel free to rate, review, and share with your friends. And don't miss an episode by subscribing. Until next time, remember, now is the best time to focus on your more and be inspired by your own unique gifts.